During the healing phase, and the TPLO takes approximately 12 weeks for the bone to heal all the way, but it heals wonderfully. Uh, and, and it's a very strong fix, so during those 12 weeks, your pet can have reasonable activity. And by that I mean uh, short leash walks, and we usually increase those a little bit week by week by week. They can have reasonable house activity. That means they can move around on a single level floor as long as the footing is good, but they shouldn't get to run up and down stairs. Uh, and so the, the, the restriction is not ridiculous, but it, it, it is important that we not allow them to overdo it. I mean, chasing a squirrel in the backyard three weeks after surgery would be a definite problem uh, or a definite no-no uh, on, on you and your dog's part. Uh, but it is a very strong fix. It's not fragile. Uh, we, seldom do we ever have a problem where a screw breaks or an implant breaks. So the post-operative period's not bad. It is a change of lifestyle if you have a doggy door because they can't go through the doggy door uh, and out to chase the squirrel. Uh, again, the, the bone healing is a two-edged sword. It takes longer to heal than soft tissues, but it is the strongest healing tissue in the body. Almost all soft tissues, skin, muscle, tendon, heals with a little weld of scar tissue. Bone actually grows bone across where the cut's been made and goes back to full original strength, but it takes about three months. So here we have an x-ray of what it looks like once the bone has completely healed. And here we see that where the previous cut was made has just filled in with a nice S shape of bone. There's no evidence of, uh, of the previous cut at all but that does take about three months. At that point, uh, animals can return to full, full normal activity, and we have one of our patients, and this is a very representative example, uh, but we have one of our patients it's out about three or four months uh, chasing the ball in the backyard. And so this, is, th this patient's actually had uh, two TPLOs, uh, and as you can see, is doing great. And again, that is a representative example, not, not just one that we picked. Uh, overall, 95% of our clients are, are thrilled with how their dog does. The 5% uh, that aren't, they're still a lot better. They're just not back to the level that we had hoped. You know, the most common reason for that and the most common post-operative problem that we see is osteoarthritis. Almost all humans or dogs that tear their ACL will develop some degree of osteoarthritis. The majority of dogs that we see, by the time we see them and scope them, they already have some degree of osteoarthritis. We think that the TPLO is the best procedure to minimize the progression of osteoarthritis, but I still think that to some degree it continues to progress. So that's the main problem that we see in dogs that have torn their ACLs, and of that 5% that say, boy, they're not as good as I'd hoped, that's usually the reason. In conclusion, I'd like to leave you with a couple of thoughts. Um, one is that dogs that tear their ACLs or are tearing their ACLs really do need surgical repair. And none of us want to have their pet have surgery. I have three dogs, they're like my kids. Uh, so I understand that completely. But ACL tears in dogs are almost always progressively debilitating. So they really do need repair. The good news is it's a correctable problem with really consistent positive results. So if your dog has an ACL tear or you think might have an ACL tear, uh, we'd love, love to be able to help uh, and get them back to the ability to chase the ball in the backyard. Thank you.